Good morning, everyone. My name is Jesse Silvera, and I want to welcome you to Spirit of the Coast Analytics' first YouTube video. I want to thank you all for joining me here. I want to extend the invitation to visit us at saucyanalytics.com, which will be in the description of this video. Today's video will be relatively brief. We'll introduce Saucy Analytics, explain our mission, discuss Anavex Life Sciences, and the Sigma-1 mechanism of action. Saucy Analytics strives to report meaningful medical intelligence related to CNS disorders, both neurodegenerative and neurodevelopmental. We're especially interested in Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, Rett syndrome, Angelman syndrome, and Fragile X, to name a few. We use our skills to follow ongoing trends in clinical research and ongoing operations at Anifex Life Science Corporation, which we will discuss a bit later in this video. As mentioned, my name is Jesse Silvera, and I'm the editor of SOTC Analytics. I regularly go by Mailmobile on online chat platforms. As a disclaimer, I'm not a certified financial analyst. I am, however, an experienced intelligence analyst for United States Air Force. Of course, nothing I say or write in the SOTC name should be seen as a reflection or view of the United States Air Force or the United States government. As an all-source intelligence analyst, my skills primarily involve analyzing, correlating, and fusing data points and sources to identify emerging trends and create powerful assessments for decision makers. I'm not a scientist, but have been actively investing in biopharmaceutical technologies since 2015, at which point I've spent well over a thousand hours researching and reading peer review publications on the most promising CNS therapies. While I work alone, I do have access to a number of experienced consultants whom I maintain regular communication. These consultants are both investment and medical sector professionals. Now that we've discussed a bit about SOTC Analytics and our mission, I'd like to talk about our primary focus, Anavex Life Science Corporation. At a glance, Anavex maintains a robust pipeline with four clinical compounds. They target ne neurodegenerative and neurodevelopmental disorders with their lead compound, Anavex 273, also known as Blarcamazine, which just successfully completed their first phase 2B3 trial in Alzheimer's disease. There are estimated to be 35 million Alzheimer's patients currently worldwide. Taking genomic study data from previous Alzheimer's studies, Anavex is poised to effectively treat at least 4.4 million patients in the United States alone. According to an ICER report published in 2021, this disease-modifying therapy could garner as much as $36 billion in the United States as no other effective disease-modifying drugs with clinically meaningful outcomes exist. You can see SOTC Analytics' update compendium for the full explanation on how we came to this conclusion. Going forward, Anavex is developing their other lead compound, Anavex 371, which may be an even more potent drug over blarcamazine. The company plans to eventually initiate a phase 3 preventative CNS trial, which we believe will include multiple cognitive disorders, not just Alzheimer's. To summarize, Anavex is a late-stage biotech targeting large unmet need with unprecedented precision medicine. They feature unique compounds revolving around the dual Sigma-1 and Mucerinic agonist mechanism of action. Between Blarcamazine and Anavex 371, Anavex targets 10 distinct indications. 20% are neurodegenerative, 33% are neurodevelopmental, 33% are pediatric, 7% are psychiatric, and 7% are other. The full indication list includes Alzheimer's disease, which is the most common CNS disorder globally, Parkinson's disease dementia, which is a later stage Parkinson's featuring dementia, it can be found in 80% of Parkinson's disease patients, frontotemporal dementia, which is a dementia caused by damage to neurons in the frontal and temporal lobes, adult and pediatric Rett syndrome, which is a disorder caused by mutations to the MECP2 gene on the X chromosome, Infantile spasms, which is a rare and serious epilepsy. Fragile X, the most common form of autism caused by mutation in the FMR1 gene on the X chromosome. Angelman syndrome, a pediatric disorder caused by mutations or deletions of the UBE3A gene on chromosome 15. 
An undisclosed indication, which we believe is possibly Bataan disease, a pediatric disorder with a high mortality rate. Schizophrenia, a disorder causing interference with behavior. And finally, classic Parkinson's disease, a CNS disorder featuring major impairment and dopaminergic dysfunction. These indications are nearly all in planned or ongoing phase two or later trials. These trials are being ran through global populations to include the United States, Canada, the UK, the EU, and Australia. This type of population diversity allows for better trial design and addresses desirability for domestic trials by regulatory agencies, including the FDA, HPFB, EMA, MHRA, and TGA. <clears throat> so while blarcamazine and Anavex 371 both feature sigma-1 receptor and mucerinic agonism, there are various secondary and tertiary binding affinities and binding strengths for the two compounds that differentiate them. For example, blarcamazine has lower sigma-1 receptor and mucerinic 1 binding than Anavex 371, but features NDMAR agonism for calcium regulation, sodium channel agonism for behavior and autism spectrum, and mucerinic 3 agonism for nitric oxide and endothelial regulation. Meanwhile, Anavex 371 features vastly superior sigma-1 receptor and mucerinic binding, and a number of serotonin agonistic features, which leads to promising investigation into schizophrenia, as these serotonin varieties are implicated in anxiety, depression, and psychosis. In summary, blarcamazine appears to be well-rounded for CNS, and has extra affinities for autism spectrum aid. 371, on the other hand, has much higher sigma-1 receptor and mucerinic affinities, with good 5-HT2-alpha and Charlie affinities, which seems to indicate the compound would have the edge on hyperfocused CNS therapies and schizophrenia. It'll be interesting to eventually see Anavex 371's Alzheimer's results and how they compare with blarcamazines. So in the next two slides, I'll briefly discuss the sigma-1 receptor and how it interacts within the cell. This portion of the video is mostly based on company findings throughout their clinical trials, but also a vast swath of Sigma-1 focused peer-reviewed publications, which has been trending in the last three years. To put it simply as possible, the Sigma-1 receptor is stored primarily in the MAM, a connection between the endoplasmic reticulum and the mitochondria. The chaperone activates in times of heightened cellular stress in order to modulate ion channels and resume normal calcium, dopamine, serotonin, and other neurotransmitter function. During the course of its duties, the sigma-1 receptor revolves, resolves rampant neuroinflammation, prevents toxic proteins from being produced, and aids in the clearance of old, misfolded, and accumulated proteins. It does all of these things and more while simultaneously reducing oxidative stress, which is the primary driver of aging. To the right, we see a graphic showing sigma-1 activation or abundance in the brains of a healthy patient and an Alzheimer's patient at comparable ages. We can see that in the top PET scans, the healthy patient has widely distributed sigma-1 through the entire brain, whereas in the lower PET scans, sigma-1 receptor abundance is significantly lower indicating a link between sigma-1 and neurological disorders. This hypothesis has been proved in at least 10 other studies that I'm aware of. Now this is going to be the most technical slide in today's video, but I'll still try to keep it as concise as possible. As background, Anavix did a full genomic analysis on patients from their early 2-alpha Alzheimer's trial and their phase 2 Parkinson's disease dementia trial. Patients were screened before trial commencement, and post-trial completion in order to discern if blarcamazine made any meaningful changes to a person's gene regulation. The company did find overwhelming changes in analysis of 14,150 genes. Of those genes, blarcamazine enriched or upregulated 1,175 genes. Of those, 70% have biological interactions. That is to say, 70% of the effective genes directly interact with each other, indicating a potent upstream effect. From these 1,175 genes, 
Anavex directly listed 65 as part of their AAIC 2022 presentation. Most of the listed genes related to three primary pathways known to be implicated in Alzheimer's disease. These are the electron transport chain, proteasome 26 or proteostasis, and IRE1, PERC, and ATF6 upstream from CHOP, also known as UPR. Now up in the top right, you can see the mitochondria with its various pathways between the endoplasmic reticulum and the rest of the cell. The mitochondria, of course, produces the majority of ATP or energy for the rest of the cell. While it has two mechanisms to do this, by far the more robust method is through the electron transport chain via oxidative phosphorylation. While the electron transport chain creates ATP, it, is also spontaneous, it also spontaneously creates oxidative species, which is toxic to the cell. With this in mind, regulating the electron transport chain to ensure proper energy creation and lowering oxidative stress is extremely important. Drawing your attention to the right chart, we see that barcamazine was able to rescue function in 54% of the electron transport chain complex 1 genes, 45% of complex 3 genes, and 43% of complex 4 genes, which are the most important complexes in the system. Additionally, barcamazine upregulated genes that help proliferate the ATP post-creation, which is of course important as a key driver of cellular health. Moving a bit down, you can see the 20S and 19S subunit. These units form together to create 26S. Together, they tag and delete misfolded proteins throughout the cell. Misfolded proteins and buildup is a major driver of neuroinflammation, and proteasome 26S deletes some 80% of these proteins. Again, moving your attention to the right chart, we see that blarcamazine resuscitated 10% of the 19S subunit genes responsible for tagging misfolded proteins and resuscitated 67% of the genes for the 20S subunit, the unit responsible for deletion. Finally, we'll discuss CHOP, which is downstream from PERC, IRE1-alpha, and ATF6. This system, known as UPR, is designed to control anti-apoptotic and apoptotic genes. In short, CHOP makes sure to produce other genes which directly control cell death. Blarcamazine was able to fully rescue CHOP, also known as DDIT3, which should prevent, or at least bring back to normalcy, the chances of the cell self-destructing in a cascade of cell deletion processes, because during excessive stress, apoptosis is activated and the cell initiates its own demise. To end this slide, I believe calcium regulation may be the linchpin to barcamazine success. Calcium funnels are the primary mechanism for moving nutrients between the mitochondria and the endoplasmic reticulum. Without proper nutrient flow, the mitochondria fails to produce ATP. Without ATP, the 26S proteasome fails to clear proteins, and with an abundance of faulty proteins, the UPR and CHOP goes into overdrive, causing mass cell death via apoptosis. To read more in depth our analysis, I highly encourage you to read the SOTSI article titled Special Edition Pivotal Road, as well as the update compendium article on 29 August 2022. Now, in my opinion, this is the most telling slide in today's video. Displayed is the ADAS COG data for a large variety of old and new trials, including Anavex, the Aducanumab and Lucanumab trials, Cassava Sciences, Anavis, and more. The ADAS COG is the gold standard for cognitive testing in clinical trials, and negative scores are favorable where positive scores indicate decline. The Anavex 2A data, which is converted MMSE to ADAS COG, has the highest, most promising cognitive scores. While waiting for the rest of Anavex's recent 2B3 data, preliminary analysis indicates similar or greater efficacy in a large portion of high dose patients in that trial. When the data is finalized, we fully expect the 2B3 high dose group to have exceeded negative five points in ADAS COG and possibly as high as negative seven points in a small portion of patients. Now I want to draw your attention to the teal bars in the bottom right. That represents lecanemab ADAS COG data, which in combination with their global CDR sum of boxes and amyloid reduction scores, 
was able to garner them accelerated approval by the FDA on 6 January 2023. In my opinion, while Acanumab represents a marked improvement over Aducanumab, their overall cognitive data was entirely lackluster, and none of their data met clinic clinical meaningful standards, unlike large poor populations or portions of the Anavex 2b3. Overall, we see amyloid targeting appears to be only marginally effective over placebo and comes with moderate to significant safety risks and lofty financial burden, both of which aren't seen with Anavex. How is Anavex doing in their other indications? Two RET trials showed high, mag high magnitude improvement in behavior, mood, motor facets, and clinical assessment, even in low doses. While the Parkinson's disease dementia trial was outstandingly positive, showing cognitive stabilization in the mid-dose and cognitive improvement in the high dose, motor function was also assessed in the Parkinson's disease dementia trial, outcomes of which were statistically significant and scores over double clinical meaningful definitions. We're looking forward to the completion of Anavex's final Rett syndrome trial by mid-2023 and subsequent, subsequent commercialization, which we believe is highly likely at this point. In our final two slides, I want to briefly go over a lengthy uh, weighted valuation, which was conducted in early 2022. We analyzed Blarcamazine's mechanism of action and identified a list of individual disorders influenced by that mechanism of action. This includes items like REM sleep, neuroinflammation, neurotransmitter regulation, calcium, ATP creation, etc. Our findings after the evaluation showed very promising trends for all disorders. The disorders aided the most by sigma one activation appeared to be autophagy and protein clearing, neuroinflammation reduction, serotonin expression, ATP production, BDNF regulation, and glutamate slash myelin. Now, taking into account the disorders and functions I just showed you, this chart shows how the upregulation or fixing of those functions relate to Anavex's pipeline. In short, this slide shows, in my opinion, how likely Anavex is to succeed in each of these indications, some of which aren't on their pipeline. The conclusion of this analysis is that sigma-1 activation is probably a catch-all disease modifier for indications that aren't even directly CNS-related, such as sexual dysfunction, heart disease, and aging. The absolute most promising disorders, however, are Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease dementia, Fragile X, Rett syndrome, autism spectrum disorders, and potentially insomnia or REM regulation. Now, I really want to thank everyone for spending this time with me on our first video. I'm extremely excited for the rest of Anavex's Alzheimer's uh, data, and we'll be back with another video after that data or the anticipated Parkinson's disease dementia uh, OLE data is released. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe and check out the rest of our content on SOTCAnalytics.com. Thank you so much.